thank you very much for your time today. And I'm so sorry for being late. Um, it's something, you know, out of my hand, you know, trying, we are trying to squeeze the time of the uh, life revision session, you know, in between the day and in between the busy schedule. So I, I, uh, I would like really um, to apologize for that. Okay. Hopefully that next time I will be on time. Thank you. Um, guys, how is your exam? My friends are preparing for the January exam. Hopefully that you are all uh, are ready for the exam. Even if you feel like you're not, but believe me, you are. Because you're doing a really good job. You are preparing. You are here right and you are keen to learn so inshallah best of luck and um i believe that all your great effort will be crowned with uh, the beautiful uh, success and with a flying colors so here as we promised we would like to uh, discuss the menopause menopausal problems and the hrt dear friends i know that you have the good knowledge of the subject but the problem is when we are when you are going to solve some questions of the MQ, key answer sometimes is not correct due to its outdated question or uh, the resources are conflicting there are many resources so we do have the nice guidelines of the menopause and the HRT. And in the same time, we do have a very important publication from the college, from the RCUG, um, including the uh, TUG articles, of course. They are different TUG articles. Some of them are quite uh, new. Like for example, in the 2023 uh, TUG articles, and I believe that you have discussed this with Dr. Nada. There is a TUG article about the mental health problem in a, in a menopause and how are you going to approach its management. Uh, also, there are, uh, over the years, there are special conditions or situations when uh, HRT is discussed. Okay, so let's agree on something that uh, all the women around the age of the menopause, which is 51 in the UK, they have... some symptoms that you know vary from a person to another right so the hrt had a benefit and it as the same it had a benefit it has also some of the side effects okay so it's indicated whenever we have a woman who comes with a complaint okay and this complaint affect her quality of life right we usually start with simple measures or non-pharmacological me measures like when we advise lifestyle modification, advise exercise, we advise, uh, you know, uh, healthy food, stop smoking, uh, limit the intake of alcohol. All of these advices are good, okay, to improve the quality of life. But if you have a woman who come with a persistent problem and she cannot cope and she need help because of the menopausal symptoms, which, by the way, is not only with the cessation of the menstruation, it can appear before that, and we call it a perimenopausal problem. So it's a perimenopausal because it's around the menopause. I can start it, as we learned before, before the time of the menopause or the complete cessation of period, and I can start it after confirmation of menopause according to the woman complaint. Okay, so I will give you here a summary of the conditions. If you can see my screen, please say yes. So I will make sure that I'm good to go. I'm choosing my color as well. Okay, good, that's perfect. Okay, so my friends, we have an anxiety because of menopause. What do you think the treatment is? If I ask you, okay, to match the best answer, what do you think? If you want to do some matching. So, if you want to do a match, okay? Yes, so it's a CBT and this is based on the noise guideline. Okay, so we consider the CBT for a mild or 
he is presented with anxiety due to menopause. Simple, okay? A key word that will come like this. No anxiolytic, please, okay? No SSRI for the treatment of anxiety due to menopause. It's a CBT, simply, right? And if you want to play the, the game of offer or consider, so remember, it's a consider CBT, okay? So, you know, the RTOG exam is all about, you know, sure. words. So, if it is an anxiety because of menopause, consider CVT. How about low mood symptoms? And low mood is something, you know, that any woman who went, who went into the menopause, okay, she will have a low mood, right? But... If she came to you because that affecting her quality of life, then we can consider the HRT as a treatment for low mood problems. Okay, how about if the woman had a depression and this is a brand new from the TUG article? Okay, so it's mild depression. Still, we have HRT as a first line of management. In the TUG article 2023, they wrote in a very small and tiny and very informative table that HRT is a first line treatment, plus or minus antidepressant. Okay, so it will be according to the case. But they wrote also clearly HRT is the first line. How about second line? Second line, then I can consider for this patient with mild depression option, uh, mild depression symptoms, I can consider adding the antidepressant if it is not given in the first instance. Okay, guys. So in exam, your EMQ, low mood, HRT, mild depression, HRT. Okay, major depression, what is the choice for it? Major depression, antidepressant, right? So I can choose antidepressant for major depressive symptoms as a first line treatment. Second line treatment, I can give HRT plus the antidepressant. Okay, so please take care of the trick here. Okay, I'm going to share this table with you. Okay, so dear friends, now back to our table here. If the patient had low libido or low interest in sex, what you will advise for her? Are you going to advise for her? Testosterone? Are you going to advise her psychosexual counseling? No. You are going to offer HRT to manage the altered sexual function. Okay? So a patient who had low libido or less interest in sexual activity, this is HRT. And this is can start from the pre -menopause, remember. Altered sexual function, again, HRT. Okay, guys? Low sexual desire, if the HRT alone is not effective, which is an exam question, right? This is comes in EMQ and single best answer questions. So what is the action here? Testosterone, yes. So I can consider the testosterone if the HRT alone is not effective. If a woman, this is extra information for you guys. If a woman wants to avoid the estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, okay, and she's looking for HRTs that can improve her sexual function, what do you think, or as a treatment that can improve her sexual function, what do you think the You know which drug can be helpful in this case? This is extra information. No, not the clonidine. It's a tibolone. Tibolone, okay, is good 
in the problem in solving the problem of sexual desire and it can be offered to a woman okay who doesn't who want to avoid you know the uh, hrt as hormonal treatment and testosterone okay it can be an alternative one so urogenital atrophy this is straightforward it comes a lot in exam urogenital atrophy estrogen okay so look my dear dr christian okay we want to avoid the hormonal treatment at all okay in some cases there is evidence that clonidine can help patient who wants to avoid hormonal treatment at all okay table loan nowadays is out of your recommendation why i will discuss that after the table okay is out of your recommendation nowadays for the mrcog part 2 exam right why because there is a big study that been done okay and it shows some of the effects so again discuss with you bruise and cones with the tip of the table on after that okay dear so we don't have nowadays for example in the past they said breast cancer patient past history of breast cancer she can receive table loan no 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 nowadays it's not correct okay people don't also can increase the risk of stroke so it's not now okay one of your choices in exam yeah so the local estrogen my friends for the problem of the urogenital atrophy could you please tell me three indication of estrogen local in a woman in your curriculum local estrogen can be given to a woman who have number one the current uti good okay yes postmenopausal recurrent uti that's that's good atrophic vagina of course this is the most common okay Symptoms of incontinence. Do you think it can be improved with the local estrogen? Yes. Okay. So local estrogen can help you in solving the problem of the gynecology related sometimes to vaginal dryness, sometimes to atrophic vaginitis or bleeding that's confirmed that it's due to the atrophy, irritation, right? can help you also in the recurrent UTI. It can help you in improving the symptoms of incontinence when you find evidence of dryness. Good. Okay. One extra question here to test my excellent candidate. In a woman who is old age or very old or she's disabled, she can't help herself by applying the vaginal cream every day. What is the alternative? Yes, the vaginal estrogen ring. Well done. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, well done. Okay, so my friends, when a patient have urogenital atrophy, when systemic HRT contraindicated, urogenital atrophy when systemic HRT are contraindicated. 
What is the difference between this one and the above one? Only excellent candidate can tell me. I will consider vaginal estrogen for hair. Okay, so why did I bother myself? Okay, putting two, sorry, line in the table. Above one with combination along with HRT, if not effective. No, it's not like this. Okay. I'll tell you guys, it's it's simply offer or consider. That's it. Okay. Yes, Dr. Stan, well done. Yes, it's simply the case of offer or consider for your EMQ. Take care of the EMQ. Like what? A woman who had breast cancer. Okay, and she's not suitable for hormonal treatment, right? But she complained of vaginal dryness. What is the treatment is that I can give her to elevate the symptoms. I can consider vaginal estrogen. Okay, so in exam, he will, he can give you, he can play the game of words of the RTUG over vaginal estrogen or consider vaginal estrogen. You will go for consider vaginal estrogen. Okay? So see how precise is the NICE recommendation. NICE guideline recommendations are very specific and precise answers. So in exam, in your EMQ, you have to be also precise like them. Okay? So choose consider rather than offer. Women who are at increased risk of VTE. Women who are at increased risk of VTE due to any reason. Generally, a woman at increased risk of VTE. Smoker, multipara, like this. What shall I consider for her? Obese. If a woman at increased risk of VTE. Is that a contraindication to receive HRT? No, not contraindication. But you give her the transdermal HRT, right? So transdermal HRT can be given in this case. Good. Okay. If there's a family history of VTE or hereditary thrombophilia, this patient is a candidate for the transdermal HRT or not? Yes, she is. Okay, but please, one extra step before, consider referral to hematologist before you start the transdermal HRT for her. Okay? Sometimes in exam, to be honest, okay, they don't give you the option of referral to hematologist at all. Sometimes he just wants you to choose the name of the medication to offer to the, to the lady and the route. Okay, so if he did that to you, you go for transdermal HRT. If he, if the answer was so sophisticated, okay, and it, it was written there transdermal HRT or consider referral to hematologist before offering the transdermal HRT, yes, please go to this sophisticated and the comprehensive statement, okay? Sometimes he asks you, what is the next step? and you will find in the next step, consider referral, right? So it's a safety. I'm speaking that because in part two, it can be a tip and trick of EMQ, but for part three, it can make you fail the exam or fail the task if you didn't mention it, okay? Okay. Obesity. You have a lady with BMI 40, 39. 38, and she needs HRT. 
what root of HRT I can give? Transdermal HRT. Okay, good. Yes, please. Risk of coronary heart disease. If a woman at risk of coronary heart disease. This patient, if appropriate, like if she had a hysterectomy, for example, estrogen will be a good option for her. Okay? And also by the transdermal route, if applicable also. Okay? But estrogen alone, if appropriate, if only appropriate, I can consider it for her. Why? Because again, the NICE guideline has published a table to discuss the treatment with estrogen or the HRT1 uh, hormone estrogen, okay, compared to the combined HRT and its effect on the coronary heart disease. And they found that its estrogen alone has no increased risk on this group of patients. Okay, so if only appropriate to offer hair estrogen alone. This is again the last two we have discussed already before. So the major depression and the mild depression from the recent took article. I have tried to summarize for you guys that HRT based on the recent evidence. Okay, choices of the HRT based on a recent evidence. Okay, you are welcome, my friends. Okay, so let's see. Some collection of questions, maybe it will help you. Okay, so guys, please choose the best answer. This is single best answer questions before we go to the images. A 48-year-old woman presented with hot flushes and sweating with mood swings during the premenopausal phase. Her period used to be regular monthly, but recently the frequency has changed and become every two months. She's also complaining of night sweats and hot flushes, generalized ache and pain. What is the appropriate management? Yes, you can give her a trial of sequential combined HRT, right? Good. Good, my friends. Yes, it's okay. Next question is Miss Melinda Smith, 52 years old, presented with concerns about the chance of developing osteoporosis. She gave a history of regular cycles. She gave a strong family history of osteoporosis and associated fracture involving her mother, maternal aunt and the grandmother. She is 171 cm tall and weight 77. She continued to experience regular period, but there are no hot flushes or sweating. How will you assess this woman? How will you assess her risk? Okay, is it about arranging the DEXA scan or it's about use of the bone mineral density to assess risk of osteoporotic features, fractures? 
as it has a high sensitivity. I would be grateful, guys, if you explain to me your answer, why you choose this choice. Okay, this is a family history. Put her at what at what level of risk? Is it the high level or it is the intermediate level or it's the low risk? Which one you would choose? You would choose high risk. Everybody has choose high risk. Actually, this lady has intermediate risk. Is she is menopausal already? Are you sure? No, she's not. Okay. So please think, just think, maybe. Look, my friends, this lady had a healthy lifestyle or not? She had a healthy lifestyle. Yes, she is exercising. Right? Good. And she had a BMI, which is, she's not obese and she's not have a low BMI. Low BMI, low BMI is a risk of osteoporosis, right? Okay. So there are protective points here. That's why she's considered as intermediate risk. Okay, this is this is why, this is the reason why she is considered as intermediate risk. I'm going to share with you guys what the the algorithm from the guideline of the osteoporosis and don't be scared okay it's not one of the important guidelines in your curriculum okay so please confirm have you received this one Yes. Okay, so what do we do in intermediate risk cases? We measure the bone mineral density. Yes. Okay. And if she found to have low density, what you will do?
there is no screen yes. Dr. Raba. if you need low lifestyle advice and offer treatment right no screen please no screen okay one second my friend Okay, guys, please confirm that you can see the screen clearly. Yes, now, Doctor. Okay. Okay, good. So, my friends, the answer that you will check the bone mineral density, okay, to assess the risk of osteoporotic fracture as it has a high sensitivity, okay? So, this is to assess the risk. If the woman is high risk, actually, we don't assess the risk. We start the treatment and then follow up, okay? If she had a high risk, we advise lifestyle and we offer treatment. Those are the actions that she will take. My friends who choose the DEXA scan, DEXA scan is not done every year for this patient because here the option it's one year. Okay, and it's not the first action to be done to assess the risk. Okay, the DEXA scan is something to follow up when the woman become a menoric. Okay, so this is an action to take for a woman who had intermediate risk of osteoporosis. Okay, so you will check the osteocalcine and the alkaline phosphatase, use the bone mineral density to assess the risk of osteoporotic fractures as it has a high sensitivity. Check the vitamin D level and start vitamin D supplementation if required. Arrange this disc scan to measure the bone mineral density and to repeat this every one to two years, hence the sequential combined HRT when she becomes amenoric. HRT also is going to have a protective effect for this lady. Start on the sequential combined HRT when the woman is amenorrheic and I can't say that she had amenorrhea because of the age alone, right? Will that be sensible to do that? No. Even if it's not mentioned, I can't assume that she is amenorrheic because only of the age. Okay? This is to remind you for the osteoporosis and for the T-score of the patient when you consider the, the T-score as abnormal. You consider it, if it is less than 2.5 of the SD or less, right? This is the cutoff for the diagnosis. Let's move to another question. We have a 44-year-old woman present with superficial dyspareunia for six months duration. She's a mother of three children by normal vaginal deliveries. She also reports urgency and nocturia two to three times at night. There's no medical or surgical history of note. She had been using the mini pills for contraception for the previous three years. Okay, so how would you approach the treatment of this woman. Answers, please. Yes, good. Okay, so you are going to perform the examination, right? 
how about the other actions? Are they correct or something wrong? All are correct, right? Right, but the first thing that you will do is to examine hair, right? Makes sense. Good. So a 67-year-old woman was seeking a second opinion to restart HRT. She's suffering from recurrent of vasomotor symptoms, vaginal dryness, and dyspareunia. Her GP discontinued treatment five months earlier in view for the potential increase in HRT-related risk and duration of use. She underwent pelvic clearance operation 18, month, 18 years earlier and enjoyed the benefit of estrogen-only therapy in the form of micronized estradiol tablets, 1 mg once per day. How would you approach this woman? What is the problem in this lady? What is the problem, guys, in this lady? Vasomotor symptoms, vaginal dryness, and dyspareunia. Right? Okay. So. Do you think that local estrogen is going to help with the vasomotor? Okay, so please search about something else. No, SSRI. SSRI is never a treatment for vasomotor symptoms or vaginal dryness or dyspareunia. Dr. Stam, if a patient received estrogen, micronized estrogen, her vaginal dryness and dyspareunia should improve. But her main symptoms, her, her main problem is the recurrence of vasomotor. Okay, so a patient had pelvic clearance surgery. Pelvic clearance include hysterectomies or not? The patient had hysterectomy. Her age is 67. She is on estrogen only therapy in the form of micronized estradiol tablets. So, do you think that somebody gave her wrong medication for 18 years? Prime, prime rose oil is not supported by evidence. So why only one of you had advised the lower possible dose of micronized estradiol to control her symptoms? No, I can't give combined actually, dear. She had a pelvic clearance surgery. She had a hysterectomy before.
right? Do you agree? Okay. Yes, he wanted to start to stop the treatment, okay? But when he discontinued the treatment, five months, she got a recurrence of symptoms. Right? My friends, why do you think that hormonal treatment is not suitable for this patient? Why did you disagree for the hormonal treatment? Do you think that pelvic clearance operation? Okay, Dr. Joy here. So I need to stop you. Is a pelvic clearance operation only done in cases of cancer? Did he mention cancer? No. You know, do you remember the very famous, yes, long-term usage is, is, is one of the reasons why did he, the GP, okay, thought that I would stop because she is long-term, right? Okay, so look, my dear, when he said, yes, when he said that the GP discontinued treatment earlier in view of the potential increased risk in HRT related risk with duration of use, right? Correct. So the GP had this thought. However, you know that estrogen alone therapy is not associated with very high risk. In this woman, the background risk or the comparison between the risk of estrogen alone therapy to other population, to the general population, is not that much high. Especially that the woman had recurrent of symptoms, so the lady is not happy about this decision of the GB, right? So the hormonal treatment is better to be given in the years following the menopause and everybody speak about the benefit of use till the age of 59 but if the woman is still complained symptoms and when you stop the medication she got the recurrence of symptoms vasomotor vaginal dryness and dyspareunia like you are repeating this everything again for her right mm -hmm. So is that an indication to consider continuation of the treatment? Yes. Dr. Iman, if the vasomotor, okay, is HRT. Once you have vasomotor HRT, what suitable HRT is for this patient? The suitable HRT for this patient is estrogen alone. Right? Patient should be counseled about the risk of continuation of the hormonal treatment based on evidence, right? And you you will take the decision based on benefit outweigh the risk, right? If the patient is still complaining. I will tell you guys, most of you have been tricked by the pelvic clearance operation. And this is a point of you guys for you, okay? That you take care whenever he didn't reveal something in the scenario, don't assume it. So pelvic clearance surgery only. And after that, she's she enjoyed, and he even said enjoyed the benefit of estrogen only therapy, right?
The thing is that the dose is high. So if we give the lower possible dose of micronized estradiol to control her symptoms, this will give us the benefit of the treatment in the same time try to reduce the side effect side effect with the continuation of estrogen therapy alone okay yes we have to discuss with her carefully yes as dr fatima said okay we have to discuss with her the risk okay the small increased risk of breast cancer in this case right and it's up to her to choose whether to continue or not. But other options are not suitable. Right? SSRI is not a treatment of menopausal symptoms. Vagina dryness or dyspareunia or vasomotor. So it's not helpful. Prime Rose has no, has no evidence of it. Advised local estrogen is going to solve only the problem of vagina dryness, but not the vasomotor. Low dose combined, no, it's not in this case. Advise the lower possible dose. This is the best option that we have here. Right? Okay. So guys, which is the following of the following statement regarding premature ovarian failure is true. Yes, correct. It's D. So premature ovarian failure is confirmed. Two tests are beaten at least four weeks apart. Okay, that show a raised gonadotropin level. A 49 years old approached you in the clinic as she had having regular troublesome hot flushes for the past six months. Her last period was two weeks ago and they are regular. She's healthy and fit with BMI of 34. Which is the most suitable type of HRT to start on here? Yes, so combined, sequential or continuous, it will be sequential, right? Because of her age and she is premenopause. Yes, it's it will be suitable for her. Best to give her the patches rather than the oral, but he give you here the choice between oral or patches. Right? Correct? Which of the following statement regarding osteoporosis management in postmenopausal women is true? This is a new information I for you guys to share. Raloxifene. It does not affect the uterus. So 
No, it's not C. But we don't say or we don't comment about the coronary heart disease with the, with the raloxifen because simply we don't have enough evidence that it reduced the risk of coronary heart disease. Because if we said that it reduced the risk of a coronary heart disease, this is a good thing. Guys, it, it's a piece of it's a new information, guys, for you, for you. Okay? There is a new medication that is licensed to use for the postmenopausal woman with osteoporosis. And this is, okay, something that I need you to just know. That's why I brought it here. I think I thought that I need to share this with you. And I think also that the college has commented on that. That's why I thought that I need to share this with you. The Dino is new license for the postmenopausal woman with osteoporosis. Okay, so just a new information so you'll be updated with the news. It's not daily, dear. Okay? This is the thing, that the bisphosphonate is not taken daily. Most likely, people will have, like, gastric irritation. It should be taken in the morning on empty stomach with plain water. Okay? It will be taken once per week, most of the time. Ibandronate is one once per month preparation. Okay, so you are meeting a 46-year-old woman in the menopause clinic. Her mother died at the age of 48 from acute myocardial infarction. She wants more information on the use of HRT and other medication to prevent coronary heart disease. Yeah, so the estrogen may have a protective role in the chronic heart disease for women aged 50 to 59, right? The interesting fact is that estrogen after this, it has a protective effect or not? Yes, so I, I would like to hear, comment on the risk of the coronary heart disease with the HRT, okay? So please just, you know, bear with me. There was an observational study reported to decrease incidence of coronary event by around 40% of the women had, a, had HRT. But observational studies are not of, of high quality evidence. A randomized control trial found that there is increased risk of the coronary heart disease in women who started combined therapy more than 10 years after menopause, especially in the age group of 70 to 79. Okay, but non-significant reduction in risk of the coronary heart disease of estrogen only had been noted when initiated within 10 years of the menopause and in the under 60. 
but in the group of total mortality from the coronary heart disease and stroke combined was significantly 30% lower in estrogen only user compared to placebo. Okay, so it found that the 30% reduction, this is a very good. So in early postmenopausal women, consider estrogen as cardioprotective. Cardioprotective, remember this. Okay, because of that, responsiveness of the endothelium to estrogen as potent inducer of the nitric oxide. Okay, while initiating HRT in late menopause may not offer this protection and they could increase the cardiovascular disease. Okay, so if we speak about how a woman will benefit from using the HRT, remember that it's best to be offered to her at the time of the postmenopausal, like uh, or around the menopause, not very late, because if you waited very late, what will happen? Nobody will be happy, right? She will not get the benefit. Maybe she will get only the side effects. Yes, okay. I thought that I would like to review evidence with you guys about the risk of venous thromboembolism with HRT, okay? So here, this is, you know, the recent evidence. That's why we said that we rely only on the recent evidence. The oral estrogen therapy, what do you think? has no effect on the risk of VTE or increased risk of VTE or decreased risk of VTE? Yes, oral increase. Good. Yes. Okay, because of that, metabolism, right through the liver. This increased risk peak during the first one to two years of use then drop to the natural risk afterwards. May I ask you guys about the non-oral estrogen? No, there is no increased risk, right? That's why it's not a contraindication or absolute contraindication in a patient with high risk of VT, right? Only the patches or the oral, okay. Okay, so uh, hopefully that we are happy so far. Okay, so may I ask you, my friends, for like a few minutes of break, then we come back to continue our discussion, because I would like to discuss with you a couple of algorithms that will be helpful, inshallah. Thank you. 